So section 14.7 is about sec second order partial derivatives. Um, so what is a second order derivative? So if you think about calculus one, a second order derivative is the rate of change of the rate of change. We call it the second derivative in Calc 1, and here we call it the second order partial derivative. In Calc 1, what did the second derivative actually tell us about? So the first derivative tells us whether a function is increasing or decreasing. The second derivative always tells us about concavity. And that's actually the same here, uh, except we have concavity in two directions, in the x direction and the y direction, and we're going to talk about how we, we look at it and how we deal with it. Okay, so here we have several pictures of, actually four pictures of partial derivatives, or second partial derivatives. Now, at each of these points AB, whether we're at AB, actually we're going to be looking at the surface, the point ABZ value here, we want to determine which second order partial derivative is being modeled. So there's four of them. There's F sub XX, F sub YY, F sub XY, and F sub YX. Now I'm just going to tell you right off the top, no matter what you're doing, f sub xy will always equal f sub yx. This is a big thing to remember. So that's why we're only looking at three of the four. But there are actually four of them. Let's see if I can make this a little more focused. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. Okay. So when I take a look at this first picture here, here's the point in question. And it looks like I'm moving parallel to the y-axis and the slopes of these, these lines are also parallel to the y-axis, okay? So that means that this is referencing a change in y and this is referencing the change in the change in y. So this guy is going to be f sub y, y. This one here is I'm still moving parallel to the y-axis, but notice that these slopes are in with respect to the x-axis. So this is f sub y x. So the first derivative comes first, and then where you're taking the second derivative comes second. All right, let's take a look at the guy down at the bottom. Here, um, this is parallel to the x-axis, so this is going to be f sub x of some sort. And then since all of these are referencing a change in x, this is f sub x, x. And then here, the first derivative is parallel to the x, so that's going to be f sub x. And then these are all parallel to the y-axis, so this should be f sub x, y. So that's a nice way of visualizing it in three space. It's not the easiest thing to visualize, so I have to think about making a small change here, and then looking at how that slope changed. Okay. Now the second part of this handout is to find the signs of all of these in every case. So if I have f sub y, y here, I'm only concerned about the sign of f sub y and f sub y, y. So notice here that this is concave, or I'm sorry, this is decreasing as I move in the y direction. Z is decreasing as I move in positive y, so that means f sub y is negative. Now what I really also want to do is look at these slopes here. This slope, this slope, and this slope. Now if I look just in the z axis, z, y axis, notice that these slopes are going they're negative and becoming more steep, more negative though, okay? So that means that this is a slope that's closer to zero and they become more and more negative. So when I'm close to zero and I become more and more negative, I'm moving left on the number line. That means I'm decreasing, so that's going to be negative. Also notice this is concave down, so you expect your second derivative to be negative. Now most of these pictures are exactly the same representation, but let's take a look at this guy here. You can see that as I increase on the y-axis, my z is decreasing, so f sub y is less than zero. But then let's take a look at these x's. So again, if I looked on that axis, the zx axis, I go high z to low x, 
and then it looks like it just gets steeper and steeper as I go, much like it did before. So my first slope is negative, but closer to zero, and they get more and more steeper, more and more negative, so I'll go that direction. That means these slopes are actually decreasing, so this should be less than zero. Coming down here, notice that this, as my x increases, my z decreases. So that means f sub x is less than zero. And then these slopes are the same. So again, they're negative. They stop at high z, low x. This one's steeper, more negative, steeper, more negative. So that means I start close to zero. I move left on the number line. That means that I am decreasing. So f sub x, x will be less than zero. This is also concave down, so f sub x, x should be less than zero. And then when I take a look at this guy, because I know f sub y, x and f sub x, y are the same, these also will both be negative. So that's kind of a visualization of how this works in three space. Will you have to do this a lot? Mm, probably not, but it's still a nice idea to see how things work. So let's try this problem over here. So I have this big contour map and the directions say at point P find the signs of f sub x, f sub y, f sub x x, f sub y y, and f sub x y. So we're just finding the signs, positive or negative. So some of these are easier than others. So f sub x, f sub y, f sub x x, f sub y y, and f sub x y. And remember f sub y x is the same, so it should be the same to that one. Now if I'm at point P and I move parallel to the x, let's look at what happens. So first of all, let's do f sub x. So if I'm moving parallel to the x, what's happening to the z? So I go from 3 to 2 to 1, so z is decreasing. So if my x is increasing and z is decreasing, that means f sub x is negative. Now let's look at f sub x, x. So notice this is decreasing, but the contours are getting closer together. So I'm decreasing and my slope is getting steeper. So I have a negative slope that's getting steeper, a negative slope that's getting steeper. Now we talked about this on the previous problem. I have a negative slope that's getting steeper. That means I start closer to zero with this slope and I move this direction with that slope, so I'm decreasing. So this means I'm decreasing at a decreasing rate, which means that f sub x, x should be negative. All right. Now let's do f sub y and f sub y, y. So now I'm going to move parallel to the y axis. Just go through several contours. Now notice as I increase in y, z goes from 4, 5, 6, so I am increasing and my z's are increasing. So that means f sub y should be positive. My first derivative is positive because my z values increase as I move along y. Now my second derivative, I have to think, okay, I am increasing, but my rate is actually going from something that's more steep to something that's less steep. Now these are all positive slopes though. So if I draw my axes, I have positive slope that's less steep and then more steep. So my slope goes, starts closer to zero and goes this direction, and that's an increase. So I'm increasing, I'm sorry, it's the other way around. I said that backwards. So I'm more steep and then less steep. So more steep, positive, and then less steep. So that's one and two. So this guy's starting further away from zero, and then I go closer to zero. So I am increasing and my rate is decreasing. So I'm increasing at a decreasing rate, increasing at a decreasing rate, so that means that it's concave down and it'll be less than zero. See, it's tough. You have to really think about it. I made an easy mistake there. So again, the contours are getting further apart, implying that my slope is positive because those are increasing, but getting less steep. So positive and then getting less steep. So that's a decreasing rate. Now the toughie here is this one. <laughs> I, I think it's tough to look at this and really see what's happening. So you can do it one of two ways. I'll try it this way. 
So here's my change in x. That's where the first x is. And then I get to see how the rate of change is changing in the y direction. So it looks like if I think about it here versus here versus here. So I'm decreasing and my rate is increasing but in a negative direction. So it's this case. I have a less negative slope to a more negative slope. So less negative means I'm closer to zero. More negative means I'm going away from zero to the left. So my slopes are actually decreasing here because that's decreasing. So I'm decreasing at a decreasing rate. So this should also be negative. You're going to try one of these problems in your homework. It is challenging, but just go through the video again and kind of follow what it is that I talked about and how I looked at the rate of change and the distances between the contours. Next, we're going to do a bunch of examples of second derivatives.